Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. And today, I'm taking you through our Venom production program. The Australian Reptile Park has milked venomous snakes for their venom since the 1950s. We save about 300 lives every year and about 20,000 lives since the program started. Is it dangerous, you might ask? Yes, very. But we do it and it's a part of our heart and soul because we get to save lives. What a wonderful thing. Now, I want to talk you through how we do that from start to finish. Australia has 10 out of 10 of the world's most venomous snakes. Now, of those snakes, you can break them down into about five groups and they each have different venoms and the venoms behave and work differently. So those groups are taipans, tiger snakes, death adders, brown snakes, and black snakes. Each of those species needs a different kind of antivenom. And I'll explain that to you. A tiger snake thickens your blood. It also has really strong neurotoxins, and they essentially stop your brain from talking with your body and you can go into paralysis. They all have that. But the tiger snakes with the really strong uh, blood thickening effects um, mean that they're very different to a taipan. The coastal taipan has the third strongest venom. The inland taipan is number one. Now, those species thin your blood. It's very different than a tiger snake, and the antivenom needs to represent that appropriately. Now, these snakes that we keep here in the venom unit, uh, they behave like wild snakes, and in the wild, snakes use their senses, their eyes. They smell with their tongue. Their tongue flicks and it's like a gold detector. When they flick their tongue, it goes back into the mouth and there's an organ inside the mouth and they taste the air. Their tongue is forked. And the reason for that is because they can actually tell which side of the tongue they picked up the most scent particles. Let's say they're chasing a mouse. They flick their tongue. Did it smell stronger this side or that side? Then they'll move their head and they sweep towards their prey. Now, some snakes like pythons have heat sensing pits. Most Australian elapids, which are the Australian venomous snakes, don't. But pit vipers do. Um, rattlesnakes in that category also do. There are so many different species of venomous snakes. They all have venom for a particular reason. Now, mostly, it's for their prey. Now, some snakes, they might bite humans, but we're an accident. Normally a snake is cornered or feeling threatened or scared and that's when it bites. Its venom wasn't developed to bite us. It's for its prey. Now, you think about the world's most venomous snake, the inland taipan. It lives out in central Queensland. There's not a lot of food around. So when it finds a food item, like a mouse, it has to have strong venom. Otherwise it won't get its meal and it won't survive. And snakes have venoms for different reasons. Also, snakes are cold-blooded. You know, they warm up with the sun, but when they swallow their food whole, and that's what they do, they risk the food rotting inside. Now, we chop up our food, we eat little bits and we chew it well, but they swallow it whole. And if it went rotten inside them, they would die. So the venom actually, it kills the prey, but it also begins to digest the prey from the inside out. I want to show you a few things. If you live in Australia, or the rest of the world for that matter, you better know what to do if you're bitten by a snake, a venomous snake. Now, first of all, if you're not a snake professional, you should class every snake as venomous because you don't know that it's not. The easiest way not to get bitten is don't go near them. If you give snakes a wide berth, two meters, you spot one, you know, walk around it. Normally they'll take off. Snakes only become aggressive when you try and poke them or catch them or something like that. Now, if you're accidentally bitten by a snake, a venomous snake or a funnel web spider, a couple of things you need to do. One is get to hospital as quick as you can. But on your way, you need to stay calm like I am now. If you panic or you run, your blood pumps around your body faster and the snake venom travels faster and that's gonna make you sick much quicker. As hard as it is, you gotta stay calm. Next is a pressure immobilization bandage. Looks like this. 
They didn't used to make them like this when I was a kid, but they do now. It has rectangles on it. It's the right pressure when you pull it and the rectangle turns to a square. It shows you how hard or how much pressure to apply. Now, most people, if they're bitten, it will be on a limb like the legs or the arms. And if you don't have a bandage, you use some clothing. You rip something up. You use anything you have to. You start at the bite. You want to keep a little bit of your fingers out of the end so that you can tell if they're bruised or blackened or the bandage is too tight. And you roll it up your arm to the right pressure. If you're wearing jewellery, your fingers are going to swell. Take them off. Go over your shirt. Now, if the bandage is a bit longer, you can go back down again. Basically, get that arm, get it still. Uh, you can put a splint along it, which is a piece of timber. You could even use a stick. And now with that arm, the easiest for me would be to undo my shirt and I sit it in there and it's nice and still. And that's your pressure immobilization bandage. It's for snakes, funnel web spiders, and everyone should have one of these. On you if you're bushwalking, in your car, or somewhere that you know. So make sure your family has a bandage. We extract the venom from snakes. Doctors make it into anti-venom. That's the medicine that we get if we get bitten. It comes back and it looks like that. That's the medicine that you get put inside you. You have a drip in your arm if you're bitten by a snake for the right species. Now we have to milk lots of snakes to get one vial of anti-venom. Sometimes people that are bitten can take up to 10 vials of anti-venom. So we have to milk lots of snakes. Now, the last thing I want to do is actually milk a snake for you. And in here, I've got a tiger snake and they rank at number four in the world. So I don't want to get my hands too close. I don't want venom on my hands. So I put some gloves on. And this is really harmless for the snakes. So they're well fed, they're well cared for. They go through this just for a minute, which is to get their head to gently bite on to this vial. Now, this is like a small glass. And over the top, we have plastic. The snake's fangs have to go through the plastic. And when they do that, that's when the venom will come out. Let's see how it goes. Bits like that, you've got to be careful. Spot where your snake is. And you always watch the head. Okay, out comes the snake. I need to put it down on here. And I use this, it's like a potato masher. And there's a sponge under the snake that makes it nice and soft. Okay, now once we've done that, grab the snake. That's the dangerous part over. I've moved a bit closer to the camera so you can see this. So here's our snake, here's the vial. Now what we've got to do is bite on, bang, wow. Two fangs. Look at that venom in the bottom. That's probably enough to kill four of me. Now you can see the snake's nice and calm. That's happened, it's finished. Now I put it back in its cage and in about an hour, I give it some food, a big juicy mouse. Well, that's a bit of an overview about the venom program and how we make any venom. And that snake that I milked today will go towards saving someone's life. That's a good thing and it makes me feel good. There's two bits of homework for today. One is, when I said about the snake flicking its tongue out, I didn't say what the organ in the mouth was that tastes the air. So what is the organ that a snake uses to taste the air? And next is, I'd like you to put a bandage on. If you don't have a bandage, do it with a t-shirt. Figure it out just around your arm, do it with your mum and dad, so everyone can learn. And let me know that you've done both of those things in the comments. See you later. for watching everyone. Now the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.